Welcome to Motivax. Uh, with me, my associate producer, Lee Barden. Hi, Antoine. How are you today? Fine, how are you? Good. As you know, Motivax uh, depicts people's lives and their contributions over a period of years to overcome problems. And I make my guest the example so you, the audience, can absorb the determination and you can excel like them. So what do you mean? You see, there are certain individuals in this world whose concentration is 100% on the responsibility, so their creativity is capable of solving big, big problems. That's why they excel and they stand out and they become famous. And there are certain people whose, whose concentration <coughs> is on, uh, on temptations, on drugs, on coke, marijuana, alcohol, so their creativity is smaller. So this is my audience the ability, to, I mean, my guests have the ability to solve big problems. That's why I interview them and I activate their action, then I transfer, transfer their action to you. But before I introduce you to my guests, let me tune in with you so I acquaint you with yourselves. Because if you don't know who you are, you're going to be like in the air. You'll be subject to everybody's suggestions. Somebody is going to come up to you and uh, offer you a certain formula and by paying so much money a month, you supposedly you're going to be famous. Somebody else uh, has an ad <coughs> in a newspaper and by you, um, you know, uh, signing in for his program, uh, supposedly you're going to excel and be somebody important. By the time you pay everybody, you have no more money in the bank. And then you start complaining. Uh, our president is out of it. Our congressman is crazy. You even blame your mother that gave you birth. So let me acquaint you with yourself. Let me make you aware who you are. Once you become aware of you, who you are, <clears throat> then you'll be assertive. Then you'll do it on your own. <clears throat> so let's start. From the day you were born, life has been placing problems before you. And you, you have been activating right ideas that you applied to your problems and you solved. So let's see what you have become. As you know, the idea, according to fundamental psychology, <coughs> first year college, is half. The problem is the other half. So as you activate your right idea, the half, and you apply it to the problem, the other half, add them up, what have you become? Whole. Whole. See? Now you can, from your point of view, wake up every morning and tell yourself, look, I have been solving problems over a period of years, so I am whole. So when somebody comes up to you and discourages you or interrupts you, you can stand, face, conquer every problem and tell them, look, I'm whole. Now the idea, are you writing all these down? Take a pad and write down. The idea when it starts up here, even though it is right, it's unbalanced, because it didn't solve the problem yet to bring results. So after you've solved the problem, what have you become? Balanced. Balanced. So now you know you're balanced, okay? Now you're getting acquainted with yourself. You know you're whole, you're balanced. And this time you're 100% sure that what I'm telling you is the truth. It's not something hearsay. Now, since you've been activating right ideas over a period of years, you have become a being of result nature. So where did you register all these experiences? Now you registered them in your selective intelligence. Now, did you see the sign? I made a sign of a circle. It means your selective intelligence is in the form of a circle. So all your results are in there. How many degrees is a circle? 360. 360. So when I say to you, and I am talking to you now, that you see from a 360 degree angle, you better believe it. You do see from a 360 degree angle. So all your results are in that circle. So you have a rich vision. So when you come across a problem, do you say, screw it, the hell with it? Or do you research your selective intelligence for the solution? You research your... Uh, uh, over a period of years, selflessly contributing to overcome big problems, a lot of problems. And now he is on my show and he's going to be communicating his action to you. So let's together welcome Ike Turner Jr. Hi, how are you doing? How are you? Okay, <laughs> it's working hard and starving to death. <laughs> so Ike Turner Jr. 
Uh, how did you get into singing? I mean, uh, well, actually, I'm a professional recording engineer. Yes. I started that when I was 13 out of my father's studio. Uh, did Are that we talking about the same father that uh, I know and uh, right. uh, the audience knows, right. Ike, uh, Ike Turner? Turner. That's <laughs> right. And I traveled with my mother and father, Ike and Tina, for. Uh, oh, Tina Turner. Right. For uh, what, from 13 all the way up to like 21. Got into my engineering, I uh, did Sound Like with Bobby Wilmax, Stevie Wonder, Shaka Khan. Got out of that and uh, started my own group. <coughs> Went to St. Louis and started my own group. Okay. So actually, um, and actually uh, I'm into talent development, career development is what I like to do. So in other words, you help others to, uh, you equip others with the same ammunition that you activated so they excel like you. Right. So, uh, uh, has, now, your father and I, we had a lot of confrontations because I work with him mm -hmm. very closely. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that he was a legend, mm -hmm. you know. Still he, is. Still is. That's right. Well, he will get back on the way because a little bit drugs got in the way mm -hmm. with him. And they sidetracked him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I motivated him over a period of time, and I know now he's going to get back on the beam, and uh, he's going to be the legend that he was before, right. before he, he was sighted. <coughs> That's right. Did you, uh, you two have any experiences with uh, negativism, like alcohol, cigarettes? Uh, no, the only thing I do like is that? smoke cigarettes, but other than that, uh, I don't feel that it's uh, hindering me at all. Okay, uh, what about... What about uh, what about alcohol? Do you no, get drunk? No, I don't drink, no. period. I don't <laughs> allow don't nobody that works with me really to drink, period. Okay, what about uh, uh, drugs? Like no, no, I don't allow coke, it. Coke, marijuana? No, I do not allow it. So, in other words, you learned from the lesson of your I've life. learned from the past experience of watching my mother and father as they grew, you know what I'm saying, with the party and the drugs. That's not for me. Exactly. And but it was lucky that I experienced that at a young age. So now, you know, that's not for me, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so let's now, so the audience knows, uh, you know, what you have achieved. Mm -hmm. Let's roll your tape so we listen a little bit to your music. Yes, this is the tape from Toronto in Canada. Oh yeah, what's the name of the song? Uh, Sassy McNasty. Oh, Sassy McNasty. Featuring uh, Jeanette Bazell. <laughs> Engineer, roll that tape so we find out what Ike Turner is all about. <laughs> Now we know your accomplishments. So it means over the period of years, your concentration, like I said earlier, is 100% on the responsibilities. You set aside temptations, That's and right. you are a serious person. You learn from the results of your dad. Because your mother, you know, uh, from what I know of her now, she's into some kind of a, of a religious, she Buddhist, follows Buddhism. Buddhism, and right. she is fine, you know. Right until you catch up with her and then make her reasonable like you. <laughs> <laughs> no, the main thing is I'm concentrating on uh, ITJ Productions. That's my heart, you know what I'm saying, my talent. And I'm into I Turner Jr. and second generation. Right. Uh, and that's very important to me. Uh, all obstacles, you just avoid them. I see. 
you know. Well, you, you know that uh, I work with uh, a lot of the entertainment people because you see they have so much uh, enthusiasm and so much creativity and right. then in between uh, waiting they become frustrated and they get into drugs mm -hmm. and uh, then they get hooked up. Mm -hmm. So I have a foundation that I'm associated with called Blast the Habit Foundation. Mm -hmm. And instead of sending people to the detoxification centers where they take them from drug dependency to pill dependency, they come down to the center and we evaluate where their problems are at. Mm -hmm. And we tailor right ideas to their problem, then we inseminate them in their consciousness. Mm -hmm. Then they are compelled to apply these right ideas that are tailored to offset these problems. And as they do that, they fill that void and they blast the habit away forever. And that's what I did with your dad. Mm -hmm. So your dad is uh, uh, going to get back on the beam and become the legend and become even more famous than your mother. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Well, you know, I have an expectations to live up to. You know, uh, that's like in Tina, so that makes it, every people look at me like my show, uh, they look at me like um, they don't know what to expect. Uh, the show is very hot. You know, the product is very hot. The main thing is uh, it's me. You know what I'm saying? It's not Ike and Tina. This is what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? This is not yeah. about... Uh, <clears throat> okay, let's, uh, let's welcome uh, our second guest, Yeherar. She's a, a model from uh, Ethiopia. <laughs> uh, welcome to Motivex. Thank you. So, uh, you mean in Ethiopia they have beautiful people like you? <laughs> yes, they have. <laughs> <laughs> we thought, you know, Ethiopia, everybody was starving. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what we hear of Ethiopia. <laughs> everybody is bony. <laughs> you, you look like you have a commanding presence, and uh, you must have your concentration 100% of the responsibility. Do you? Yes. So what are you doing in this country? <coughs> well, um, I moved from Paris, France, where I started modeling, and, and now I live in Dallas, and and uh, since I came to the United States, I had a lot of chances and, and people give me opportunity and then I became the first Ethiopian ever seen on American television commercial nationwide and my picture appeared on the Los Angeles billboard all over and I had a part also in Dallas, so I love the American people. You mean people. the TV series Dallas? Yes, okay. and I love American people and they're really helpful and then I love to live here, so I'm trying to move to LA, which is the heart of movie and modeling. Okay. So that's why I'm so, here. Welcome to America. Yeah, thank you. Let's, let's <laughs> go to our audience because with my introduction of what I said about you, the audience, <laughs> since uh, my audience here uh, uh, were listening, let's see what feedback we have. Uh, so uh, let's go uh, first to Daryl, since he is the one <laughs> who is the most outspoken. <laughs> now you heard, you heard my, uh, my monologue at the beginning where I was uh, making people aware of who they are. What did you think? Well, I agree with that um, somewhat because I was in the same situation basically with drugs, alcohol, and you name it. As a matter of fact, about 10, 15 years ago, I was with Ike trying to play the drums with him, but I was, my head was in such a bad spot, I couldn't even carry that out. <laughs> so I went through about 15 years of drug abuse and alcoholism and what have you, and um, I've lost a family behind it and wife and kids and all, and I decided that um, the way I did it was I just turned my life over to God, and everything seemed to just fall in place after that. So. Well, if you did that, then I'm going to turn my life to you, <laughs> because like that you'll you will equip me with your ammunition <laughs> so that I can also, you know, excel like you have. Yeah, well, I, f I found it to be the best ammo for any situation, you know. And now that, I mean, I've gone to school and I've completed the course in um, actually uh, operating engineers, which is like construction industry. And, uh, I mean, my life is, is slowly falling back into place now. I mean, after it's been, I've been clean for about a year now. And um, I've been through drug programs, I've been to this and the other, but nothing seemed to work until I got that. Okay, well, you see now, you, you got to understand, when you are in the business world, you've you got to be strictly business. Uh, the word is, do not uh, speak the name of God in vain. As long as you speak right thoughts, you, you are safe. And as long as you set temptations aside, and you know what temptations are, illicit sex and things like that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, uh, uh, what about Bridget? You heard the, the opening, so... Uh, well, I, I agree with you. Um, 
to a certain extent, I think uh, it's really up to the individual because, you know, you can sit there and whatever you've learned and went through, and you might see it, see the other person coming along and going through the same thing. Well, it's, I think it's up to that individual to get their self together, you know, yeah. and sit down and uh, separate their lower thoughts and throw them away yeah. and concentrate on their higher being, you know, which is a positive thought, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, anybody could sit up and talk for days and months and years, you know, but it's really up to that individual. Well, you see here, Lee, she said, as long as you do things in moderation, it's all right. I consider what she said nonsense. <laughs> Once you take poison, whether it is a, a small amount of poison or a big amount of poison, it's the same. But Anton, it kills you. <laughs> the air that we breathe is really bad. When you think about the tons and tons of chemicals in that air out there, you're inhaling that. As long as the same way. You know. As long as you concentrate hundred percent on the responsibility, you are safe from all there, the chemicals. There in is that. use of drugs and there is abuse of drugs. I have never abused a drug, but yes, I have used some drugs. Yeah, and you're and still using that's I why felt you actually off. I felt somewhat benefited Are by you them. Are using drugs Very now? moderation. Very moderation. Nothing in excess. Okay. As long as I don't feel that I'm hurting myself, you I are. smoke cigarettes too, which you is not are, healthy. You were just fired from your job. What is the difference? <laughs> I quit. I wasn't fired, I quit. Oh, okay, you went on. <laughs> what is the difference if somebody has a shot of vodka, which destroys 20,000 units of vitamin A, versus somebody smokes a half a joint. Why is the vodka okay and legal, Who but the half this? a joint is illegal? Okay, we're talking about- Why now. is this? We're talking about Motivex. We're talking, here we're depicting people's lives and their contributions over a period of years to overcome problems. And we're saying, in order for you to excel, you gotta set aside all temptations, not one. And this is what well, I'm talking about. Well, why should you but deprive yourself of let's, pleasure? Let's have Jeanette's point of view, because we have two minutes left. Well, as far as my point of view, I, uh, from experience... Have um, you experienced drugs? No, I haven't really experienced How about alcohol? drugs, but I have seen people that have experienced alcohol and drugs, and from watching them, no, it's, not. it's not for me, I and... See. I've learned from watching I see. a lot. Okay, and so um, uh, uh, what is your next uh, step now that you are in LA? My next step is I'm fitting to go to Germany. Okay. I'm here in Los Angeles shopping for another contract. If that happens, fine. But we're, happen. fin we're finna go to Europe and tour out there for the next six to okay, nine the months. only place to succeed is America, just trust me. The rest of the world, I've lived in it, and uh, the gallon of gas there is seven bucks. People don't even have money to eat, only a handful of them. So if you <laughs> Americans, if you Americans say something about this country, I'm gonna blast the hell out of you. You should wake up every right. morning, get on your knees, and kiss the ground, and only defend America, and only buy American products. Right. And forget about buying all these foreign products, products and bring yeah. us all this uh, uh, philosophy about Buddhism and about Namarenge uh, Kyo and stuff like that. Can I just, something? just concentrate on logic. I right. have been so many places in in Africa and in Europe, and um, I know many people like here in the states and all this. But this is the only country. If you know your way, where to go. This is the only country where to be, you, to be somebody. <laughs> and with this, right. and I want to thank you. Yeah. This is the only place. On Motivex, yeah. and yes, you, yes. Ike Jr., yeah. Ike Turner Jr., and you, my audience, and my associate producer, Lee Bodden. And I'll see you again on another episode of Motivex. And I love you all.
So uh, now we know your accomplishments. So it means over the period of years, your concentration, like I said earlier, is 100% on the responsibilities. You set aside temptations, That's right. and you are a serious person. You learn from the results of your dad. Because your mother, you know, uh, from what I know of her now, she's into some kind of a, of a religious... She Buddhism. follows Buddhism. Buddhism, and right. she's fine, you know. Right until you catch up with her and then make her reasonable like you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the main thing is I'm concentrating on uh, ITJ Productions. That's my heart, you know what I'm saying, my talent. And I'm into I Turner Jr. and second generation. Right. Uh, and that's very important to me. Uh, all obstacles, you just avoid them. I see. You know, well, you, you know that uh, I work with uh, a lot of the entertainment people because you see they have so much uh, enthusiasm and so much creativity and right. then in between uh, waiting they become frustrated and they get into drugs mm -hmm. and uh, then they get hooked up. Mm -hmm. So I have a foundation that I'm associated with called Blast the Habit Foundation. Mm -hmm. And instead of sending people to detoxification centers where they take them from drug dependency to pill dependency, they come down to the center and we evaluate where their problems are at. Mm -hmm. And we tailor right ideas to the problem, then we inseminate them in their consciousness. Then they are compelled to apply these right ideas that are tailored to offset these problems. And as they do that, they fill that void and they blast the habit away forever. And that's what I did with your dad. Mm -hmm. So your dad is uh, uh, going to get back on the beam and become the legend and become even more famous than your mother. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Well, you know, I have expectations to live up to. You know, uh, that's like in Tina, so that makes it, every people look at me like my show, uh, they look at me like um, they don't know what to expect. Uh, the show is very hot. You know, the product is very hot. The main thing is uh, it's me. You know what I'm saying? It's not Ike and Tina. This is what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? This is not yeah. about... Uh, <clears throat> okay, let's, uh, let's welcome uh, our second guest, Yeherar. She's a, a model from uh, Ethiopia. <laughs> uh, welcome to Motivex. Thank you. So, uh, you mean in Ethiopia they have beautiful people like you? <laughs> yes, they have. <laughs> <laughs> we thought, you know, Ethiopia, everybody was starving. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what we hear of Ethiopia. <laughs> everybody is bony. <laughs> you, you look like you have a commanding presence, and uh, you must have your concentration 100% of the responsibility. Do you? Yes. So what are you doing in this country? <coughs> well, um, I moved from Paris, France, where I started modeling, and, and now I live in Dallas, and and uh, since I came to the United States, I had a lot of chance and, and people give me opportunity and then I became the first Ethiopian ever seen on American television commercial nationwide and my picture appeared on the Los Angeles billboard all over and I had a part also in Dallas, so I love the American people. You mean people. the TV series Dallas? Yes, okay. and I love American people and they're really helpful and then I love to live here, so I'm trying to move to LA, which is the heart of movie and modeling, okay. so that's why I'm so, here. Welcome to America. Yeah, thank you. Let's, let's go to our audience, because with my introduction of what I said about you, the audience, <laughs> since uh, my audience here uh, uh, were listening, let's see what feedback we have. Uh, so uh, let's go uh, first to Daryl, since he is the <laughs> one who is the most outspoken. <laughs> now you heard, you heard my uh, my monologue at the beginning, where I was uh, making people aware of who they are. What did you think? Well, I agree with that um, somewhat because. I'm